What's going on my Century Unit Galaxy, it's the Century Man here, so back again with another classic Wrestlemania pay-per-view review. Last time I reviewed one of the worst Wrestlemanias of all time, that is Wrestlemania 9. So this time I'm going to review one of the best Wrestlemanias, that is Wrestlemania 17 or Wrestlemania X7 at the Rallyant Astrodome, or I just call it the Astrodome, in Houston, Texas on the 1st of April 2001. The attendance for the show was 67,925. The buy rate for the show was a million forty thousand or 1.4 million. I think at the time was the highest buy rate WrestleMania of all time. That, that, that until WrestleMania 23 in 2007. That was broke by I think it was I think WrestleMania 23's buy rate was about 1.5, 1.6. I'm not 100% sure. I covered WrestleMania 23 last year. Um, the highest buy rate WrestleMania has to be... It's between WrestleMania 28 or 29. Because of uh, John Cena and The Rock. Um, anyway. So, yeah. you know, Back then, it was a, a big deal. You know, they got that biggest buy rate for the company. Because it's focused on the two biggest stars of the Attitude Era. That is yeah, The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin. I'll get to that match uh, at, uh, really later on in this review. Uh, the commentators for the show are Jim Ross and Paul Heyman. This is Paul Heyman's first pay-per-view appearance because, you know, at the, yeah, the last pay-per-view before WrestleMania was No Way Out. Um, yeah, Lawler quit the company after No Way Out because WWF fired his wife, the cat. So he quit the company, had the runs with XWF, World Wrestling All-Stars, before coming back to the company in November of that year, talking about 2001. The Raw After Survivor Series, um, Heyman's commentary, he's kind of like underrated in my opinion. People don't talk about Heyman as a commentator, you know, people talk about, you know, Jim Ross, Jerry the Kinola, Bobby Heenan, Gorilla Monsoon, uh, Golden Sully. Anyway, um, so, and by the way, he jumped shit from ECW because ECW was nearly about to bankrupt. I think it was a week later or two weeks later, the company went bankrupt for the final time. And yeah, and you know the e the ECW guys end up joining uh, WWF later on in 2001, be part of the alliance and j teaming up with the WCW guys. And speaking of WCW, this show took place one week after the final Monday Night Wars in pro wrestling history. Raw did the go home show for this show, and WCW did the final Nitro before WWF purchased WCW, and then the company was bankrupt. And that kind of planted the seeds of the evasion. You know, that's another story for another time. Anyway, so the first match to kick off WrestleMania 17. Uh, we got Chris Jericho defended the Intercontinental Championship against William Regal. Um, this is a power struggle between Jericho and Regal. Um, Jericho is besmirching Regal. Regal made, you know, the right to center guys being down Jericho, and the Dudleys also beat up Jericho, put him through a table. The most famous moment of the Attitude Era has to be Jericho pissing in William Regal's tea. Basically, just basically piss in Regal's teapot, and when Jericho, uh, sorry, not Jericho, Regal p uh, drinks the, the tea, he got that facial expression. That was funny. Um, and also, Jericho uh, dressed up like Doink to beat down Regal. To get some heat. That was on the Go Home Show to Raw. And Jericho said it in the his second book. And Shawn Michaels was a bit frustrated and confused. Because uh, he they, he thought that the company, the DJF, is going to repackage Jericho. And make him as Doink. And then, you know, he should have made you Doink, man. That was in Jericho's second book. Um, it, because I think it was just promoting Doink. Because Doink will be in the Gimmick Battle Royal. We'll get to that match uh, a little bit later on in this review. So, anyway... Um, it was a fun match between Jericho and Regal. Um, the bulk of the match, he had Regal working on the shoulder of Jericho. He w injured Jericho's shoulder on the Go Home Show to SmackDown for the show. Anyway, I think one, one time, uh, Regal trying to lock the Regal stretch onto Jericho. Um, in the end, uh, Jericho hit the Lion Moonsault onto Regal to win this match and retain the Intercontinental Championship. And also, the, the title changed hands... I think it's two or three times because two days later on SmackDown, I think it was on Thursday, I think that at the time it was on Thursday. Yeah, uh, the following SmackDown after the show, yeah, uh, Jericho dropped the title to Triple H, and then a week later he dropped the title to Jeff Hardy, and then and then I think another, and then a week later, I think it was on Raw, 
Uh, yeah, and you know he dropped the title back to Triple H, and then he dropped the title uh, to Kane at Judgment Day in May. Anyway, um, and as for yeah, the as for the rivalry between Jericho and Regal, it they had like a crappy rematch at Backlash. They had the Duchess of Queensberry match that was crap. You know that's a if I review Backlash or one, I'll probably do it next time. So. Yeah, the the opener of Jericho vs. Regal, you know, it was a good way to kick off the show. It was fun, it was fast-paced. Um, because, you know, because, yeah, 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 that was the funny part, you know, Jericho pissing Regal's tea. Um, because uh, Regal is being this snotty, snooty British uh, commissioner, because he's from England. Um, I, you know, yeah, I like, I like that character, you know. You know, being that role, being this posh, snooty British guy, he's been, he continued to do this character... Um, in two, the when he was the uh, Raw GM in like 2007, 2008, you know, right, yeah, right now, you know, it's very funny that you know, Regal is now part of NXT, he's like the commissioner of NXT, Jericho is now in AEW, so anyway, so moving on to the next match, so the next match, uh, we got a six-man tag team match, we got APA, um, that is Farouk and Bradshaw, Bradshaw is the hometown hero, he's a, not, a oh, home state hero, I don't know he's from Houston, um, with Taz, Timino with Taz taking on the Right to Censor group, of uh, that the represent Right to Censor. We got um, the No tr No the Good Father. I almost said the No No Train. <laughs> you got the Good Father, um, Bull Buchanan, who's you know part of the, the was it the Truth uh, was it the Truth Commission in 2000, uh, 1997, that that South African group, and then he was uh, the Big Boss Man's lackey, and then he become B Square. He'll be the Future bodyguard of John Cena, yeah, yeah, good father, Bull Buchanan, and Falfinas with Stevie Riches in in their corner. I was like, his corner? What the hell? No Ivory, because Ivory was preparing for her uh, women's title match. Uh, we'll get to her match later on in this review. Anyway, so this match, it wasn't bad. This is the problem with these. There was barely any bad on this show for WrestleMania 17. There was nothing like cringeworthy or terrible. Um, it's just what it is. Um, um, I'm trying to keep it short and simple. So in the end, uh, Taz, uh, not Taz. Um, uh, I think it was Bradshaw. Bradshaw uh, got away from because uh, good. Uh, sorry, the good father was going for the no train. He got out of the way. A close line hits uh, the good father with the close line from hell to score the victory. It's really sad. This is a uh, the writer center's one and only WrestleMania appearance because they debuted. As a group in, I think it was SummerSlam 2000. I covered that show last summer. Um, and it's pretty, it's pretty sad because uh, months later in June, they, the group officially broke up. I think it was have to because if they continue as a group, I think during the, going into that in the evasion storyline, they'll pretty, probably get lost in the show. I think breaking up the right to censor is basically was the right direction. Most of them like quit. Mostly stick around in the ruthless aggression era. You know, I think that was. I think it was F Foul Venus become Chief Morley. Um, I I think he pick he appeared once or twice the Godfather. Stevie Richards end up you know, t do, uh, teaming up with um Victoria. You know Lisa Moro Lisa Marie Ferron. Um, so that's it. I think that's it. Um, yeah, Bob Buchanan, like I said, will be John Cena's bodyguard when he's doing the rap the rapper gimmick. Um, that was like 2002-2003, so yeah, it was just a short match, it wasn't terrible, it wasn't great, it's was just basically just like filling time, so moving on to the next match, the next match, um, this is a, f an, this is a fun next match, the next match, we got a triple threat match for the hardcore title, we got Raven defending the title against Kane and the Big Show, this was fun, a fun match to watch, it was funny, <laughs> it's funny that they were chasing um, they're, they're using golf carts like, like you had Raven driving the golf cart. Big Show was under, really behind the golf cart. He grabbed um, Raven from behind. And he kind of crashed the the cart near some wires, almost like like shorting out the uh, the lights off the show. And also Kane drive the the golf cart later on in this match. He kind of run over Raven's leg. You know, Raven's selling, he was screaming. And also, you had Kane kind of throwing Raven through a window. I think it was in some fake office building. And also, the funny part is Big Show's face, facial expression. He was going to Chuck's line, 
uh, Kane, but Kane chokes on the Big Show. You get that Big Show has a facial expression. They went through a fake wall. You can tell it's not real. It's fake. It's something you. It's like a prop you see. You know, they do in TV shows and movies. Um, it was it was funny. It wasn't cringe worthy. It was a fun hardcore match. You know, the twenty four seven rule did not play a massive part in this match. A glad fuck. I don't like. I, I no disrespect of the twenty four seven rule for the hardcore time. I don't like the twenty seven. A title in today's WWE that was shit anyway in the end uh, you had Big Show trying to grill press Raven off the stage Big Show sorry Kane booted Big Show in the stomach Big Show and Raven through it went through the stage Kane kind of did a, a diving elbow off the stage pins figure pins the Big Show win this match and become the new hardcore title a champion sorry and also um this is Kane I, th I might be wrong about this I think this is Kane's um only, I think it's his first singles title win since winning the WWE title in 1998. Uh, because he was a tag team wrestler, you know, teaming up with X Park and Mankind. Yeah, it was a long uh, title drought. You know, it's been three years. You know, you know, he's WWF champion in 1998, and then fast forward in 2001, he was the hardcore champion. I think he ended up dropping the title probably on the Raw because it's really funny that um, he ended up. Be, uh, you know, winning the tag team titles for, with his KFA brother, The Undertaker, and then becoming the Intercontinental Champion. Uh, of that, making him a, gra a Grand Slam Champion. You know, yeah, it was just like what it is. It's just, you know, I think it was the first title change of this show. So, yeah, it was a fun match between uh, Raven, yeah, Raven, yeah, Raven, Big Show, Kane. You know, it wasn't any, like, botchy. It was funny for what it is, you know. So moving on to the next match. The next match we got Tess defended the European Championship against Eddie Guerrero with Perry Saturn in his corner. So you know, t uh, basically Eddie Guerrero cost Tess a match against. I think it was against A Train or X Park on the Go Home Show to Raw. Basically, uh, Eddie disguised as the referee did the fast count, cost Tess the match. So this is setting up um this match on the show. The match was okay for what it is. Like I said, there was no terrible matches on the show. No filler. It's just basically just what it is, you know. And this show is a bit long. People, yeah, I, I, the one kind of nitpick off the show was a bit too long. There was like fucking ten matches on the show. You know, it's way better than... The, right now, today's WrestleMania is out fucking... Not before, you know, right now they do... The, in today, our current timeline, they're doing two nights. But before that, they were doing like... Um, four or five hours WrestleMania's on the network. It's getting ridiculous. This is about three hours, 45 minutes. Anyway, it was an okay match what it is. Told a good story. It was a slightly decent match. Um, yeah, the Radicals uh, got involved. Uh, two halves of the Radicals. You know, you got Paris Satin and also Dean Malenko got involved. In the end, uh, Eddie Guerrero hit uh, Tess with the European title belt. Won this match. Become the new European champion. And it's very funny that um, he won the title one year ago. I think it was the the Raw after WrestleMania 16, defeat Jericho for the title, and then you know Eddie will do his um he did a, that love uh, storyline relationship with China, did the the Mama Sita thing, and then and I think this Eddie's second to last pay per view match before he got fired in I think it was in May of 2001, you know doing DOI. He ended up you know had a, a short run with Ring of Honor. No, not Ring of Honor. Yeah, he had a run with the Indies before coming back to the company in 2002, and the rest is history. So, yeah, like I said, not a not a terrible match. It was okay for what it is. You know, it's good to see you know another title change. You know, we had um, you know basically you had you know Jericho retain the IC title belt. You had Kane winning the hardcore title. Uh, belt in the triple threat match and now Eddie just won the European title from Tez on this match so So the next match we got Kurt Angle versus Chris Benoit you can tell this match is uh, you can tell the show is starting to get great going, going to get better you know the first three matches were f Yeah, that was good for what it is was they were fine So yeah, the next match was Kurt Angle versus Chris Benoit. It's all about the, these two between Benoit and Angle, they focus on making each other tapping out. They don't care about pins for. Angle grabbed the mic and basically bashing the state of Texas. And also he says, lose the freaking cowboy hats. Why are you, seven? It's funny, funny that months later, I think it was on Raw Smackdown, you had Angle wearing a funny cowboy hat. 
you know, you can see pictures on on YouTube or on Google. Just type in Kurt Angle wearing a cowboy hat. And you find you see Kurt Angle wearing the cowboy hat. Uh, it's funny that he's bashing the state of Texas, and then months later he's wearing a cowboy hat. You know, Kurt Angle, he's kind of over. He can do the two stuff. He can do two stuff: being the serious heel in the ring, and also do the comedy stuff. You know, that reason reason why you know Angle's. You know, one of the be best heels. You know, he's a he's better off as a heel than a babyface. Um. Anyway, the match between Benoit and um Angle, it was good. Um, they told a good story. It was physical, a lot of mat style wrestling at the beginnings of the match. Uh, I think one time, I think like um at, uh Benoit locked Angle with an ankle lock. Um. Yeah. Back and forth. Um. In the end. Um. Uh. Benoit. I think Benoit. Was, you know, there was a referee bump. Benoit lock Angle with the um the cripple crossface and uh, Angle basically tap it out, but the referee did not saw it because he was uh he got tapped out. Um in the end Angle I think he low blow Benoit without the referee saw him. Roll uh, really roll rolled up uh Benoit with his tight holding his tight to win this match. And then afterwards um there was an interview segment, Benoit a uh, cheap shot angle, locked him in the cripple crossface. This is setting up a submission Iron Man match at Backlash the, uh, a couple weeks later. Um, I heard it was that good. Um, you know, one day, I might review Backlash or one one day. So anyway, the match between uh, Angle Benoit. It's funny that they end up feuding in 2001. They end up feuding and teaming up at the same time because they were a tag team in 2002 when the star of the brand split. They become the the first um, WWE tag team champions. You know, you know. I don't know. Yeah, they were. You know, because the part it was the the SmackDown tag team belts. You know, uh, you know at the time. You know, they were they were not the SmackDown tag team championships. They were the WWE tag team championships because the, because back then it was the World Tag Team Championships. And the WWE Tag Team Championships. Right now, it's the Raw Tag Team Championships and the SmackDown Tag Team Champion Championships. You know, Angle and Benoit were the first Tag Team Champions on the SmackDown brand, and then uh, the fight again at I think it was at um, Unforgiven the following year in 2002. It's funny. It's it's funny that Angle's hair's starting to go. It's funny that funny that one year later in his feud with Edge, he ended up shaving his head bald. You know that that would be at Judgment Day 2002, the first uh, pay-per-view under the WWE name. So moving on to the next match, the next match, gonna keep it short and simple. Uh, we got Ivory defended the Women's Championship against China. This is the rematch from the Royal Rumble a couple months back. Um, you know, in late 2000, right to center, injured China. You know, spiked her on her neck, injured her neck in the process. You know, they did that crap. They did like storyline, like China. You know, dude, I said it in my review of Royal Rumble 2001. That was bad in taste. You have some someone doing a neck storyline for in a storyline that is very tasteless. Um, so China, had, they had the the match of the Rumble. China basically her neck had a neck a whiplash and. You know, China, really Ivory defeat China in the first match at the Rumble. So this is the rematch. Um, this is a quick squash match. Um, China's entrance, basically China did like, holding like a, I thought it was a confetti gun, but it shoot, shoot out pyro, it's a big pyro gun, that was good. Um, it was a squash match. He, she hit like the grill press onto Ivory to win this match. Yeah, Ivory had some, some of the offense. China, you know, squashed her. Gorilla Press, pin her, and China become the new women's champion. Um, it's kind of like a mixed bag because I think China doesn't really need to become women's champion. She doesn't really need the title belt. It's just what it is because there's rumors they want trying to put the WWF title onto China, but I don't want to get into it. They change plans. They have put you know you know China in the women's uh, uh in the women's title division in the you know competing for the. Women's towel belt. I'm trying to say, so I'm kind of stumbling. Um, it's really funny that this is China's second to last pay-per-view appearance because her final pay-per-view appearance was at Judgment Day in May. She dropped the title to Lita, and then after that, you never see China ever again. Yeah, the many st there's many stories that why China left. Um, you know, she she left at the end of 2001, and the reason why there's the biggest theories that the reason why she left or got fired. Uh, China, uh, basically Triple H pushed China out of the company. Rumors that Triple H cheated on China because at the time Triple H and China were a couple. Triple H cheated on China, you know, dated uh, Stephanie McMahon. And, you know, yeah, you never see China ever again. It's, a fuck it's fucking sad she never came back. And 
this month marks the fifth anniversary of her of her death. Yeah, it's just sad. Um, you know, because I think I, uh, China. I think at the time she was selling Playboy. She was kind of like drawing Playboy. She got her own book. She was kind of like the esper She kind of expired a lot of women, l little girls and women. And you know she's in the Hall of Fame, you know, you know, part of DX. But she kind of, she's kind of like the Andre the Giant at her time, you know, inspiration of little girls and women, you know. And it's just like you know, the seeing what David F slash E did to her, it to me, it's a fucking criminal, you know. Um. Anyway, so let's move on to the next match. The next match, uh, we got Vince McMahon versus Shane McMahon. So this is all about you know Vince basically divorced Linda. Linda is basically, they kind of, he, he kind of drugged her wife, you know, she, with, you know, she's kind of kind of tonic, she was sitting in a wheelchair, not saying anything, not doing anything, and basically, you know, Finn's having, like, an affair with Trish Stratus, so, and also, you thought, like, Stephanie's, you know, fight, fighting against her dad, but unfortunately, she, her, her, you know, Finn's and Stephanie were in cahoots, they kind of, like, humiliated, uh, Trish, you know, covering her with mop goop, Made her strip uh, down her underwear, you know, basically made her bark like a dog, you know, still part of Vince, you know, in the big man's at this time. Shane came back, I think she got, I think he got injured, and then, yeah, fighting for the family. And also, on the same role when, you know, you know, the final Monday Night War era of pro wrestling, yo, know, Shane showed up on Nitro. You know, Vince said he's gonna, like, sign the contract to own WCW on this show. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Uh, Shane basically showed up at, at the final Nitro, and she, he kind of like kayfabe bought WCW. Um, I don't want to get into that WCW bit, so yeah, it's the it's more it's he want he wants to fight for his family, and also the guest star, the guest referee for this um re, uh, for this match is Mick Foley, who was at the time who was kind of like the ex commissioner because at the time the commissioner of the WWF was William Regal. Anyway. So the match was it was decent for what it is. I'm trying to keep it short and simple. Um, Steph did got involved a lot, not a lot, but a bit. You know, uh, she smacked Shane when Shane trying to put Vince through with an outs table, doing the dive, diving elbow off the top rope. In the last match, uh, Steph kind of pulled Vince out out of the way. Um, you got Trish kind of like wheeling Linda on the wheelchair, got her basically her payback, smacking. Vince in the face, cat fat Stephanie, chase Stephanie out of the, the building, and then you had Vince saying, you bitch, um, yeah, he kind of cheat shot Mick Foley, hit him in the back with the chair, and then placing Linda on it, on that same chair, he's about to hit off uh, Shane, probably with the, um, the trash can, buttons, and then the fans part when Linda rolls out her chair, low below Vince McMahon, Got her, yeah, and she got her payback because she, you know, because Vince. I know, I know that they're still married to this day. I know it's entertaining purpose. You know, it's a good to see. You know, it was got a good pop. You know, kind of got that payback. You know, Linda. You know, you know, kick uh, Vince in the balls for cheating on her and left. So yeah, Mick Foley did her his comeback. You know, hit Vince in the face. You know, with the running knee in the corner. In the end, Shane hit the um the co I think it's the first time he hit the coast to coast onto Vince to win this match. I think it's the one and only time they fought one on one. I might be wrong about it. So, what wasn't a great match, but it was a good match. What is a good storytelling? Like Trish came 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 got revenge on both Vince and Stephanie, and Linda. Came out of a chair, kicked Vince in the balls, and yeah, you know, you know, yeah, it was kind of overbooked. You know, Mick Foley, you know, do it, you know, with Mick Foley getting involved, it's just what it is. So, so moving on to yeah, TLC two. Um, we got um, I think the Dudleys. I think they're now the the, the tag team champions defending the belts against Edge and Christian and the Hardys. Um, they fought at the Triangle Ladder Match at WrestleMania 16 the previous year. They had they fought at TLC One at SummerSlam the same year. This is the re this is the third and final trilogy of their matches. They never fought they never fought ever again. I think um, between the three tag teams. So this is kind of like the the blow off. It's been one year since you know the Triangle Ladder Match at WrestleMania 16. Too much to cover. I'm gonna cover some of it. Um, so. 
uh, Lita, Rhino, and also Spike Dudley got involved. You had uh, Spike hit the acid drop onto Christian. He kept off the ring apron, put him through a table. Jeff Hardy did like the swanton bomb onto Rhino off the ladder and um, through a table. I like his spot at WrestleMania 23 in the Money Bank ladder match. In that highest ladder match, in that highest ladder, he did the swanton bomb off it. You know, that was way better than this at TLC 2. Lisa did like Hurricane Runner onto Rhino, and Rhino score um, Matt Hardy. Jeff Hardy, he's trying to do like a tight walk in the tight world uh, onto those ladders. He almost put it off, but unfortunately, the final ladder is kind of wobbly, kind of fall off the ladder. That was that, the the stuff in this match. It was so um, good, creative, uh, good. The the got creative in this match. It was good. Um, the most famous moment in this match has to be Edge did that spear, you know, off the top rope. That was sick. You know, that was it's. They showed many highlights of this moment. You know, he speared Jeff Hardy off the um the top rope because Jeff Hardy was dangling, grabbing the trying to grab the bells. Edge did like that spear off the top rope, spear, speared him off. That was sick. That that led to his neck injury, but that was good. Um, yeah, I think Rhino kind of. Pull, kind of push both. I think it was what I think it was Bubba Ray or Dud or Devon or I think it was D, I think it was Matt and Devon or Bubba Ray push him off the table, push him off the ladder. Sorry, and pull him through. Meant plenty of tables. In the end, Edge and Christian won um, the third match. It really hit me like a hammer because they won the triangle ladder match at WrestleMania 16. They won the first TLC match at uh, SummerSlam of the same year, and now they won TLC 2 on this show, you know, three in a row. Never knew. And also they ended up dropping the, t the tag team titles to The Undertaker and Kane, and then they, I think it was, I think it was the Raw after WrestleMania, or maybe after WrestleMania, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. And also, yeah, and BOD, that stands for the Brothers of Destruction. They are also dropping the, the tag team title belts to the two-man power trip at Backlash, so... So yeah, this is, I say, the second best match of the night. Told a good story. Um, go and check it out, you know. It's really good. Good creative spots. You know, they beat the living piss out of each other. It made them household names. Um, you know, Edge, Christian, the Hardys and the Dudleys. And they never fought ever again um, in the same match ever again. They fought later on, you know, because like one or two fought again in, you know, in TNA. You know, Jeff Hardy and Bobby Ray, they fought, but they... Yeah, they never, you know, and also the yeah the Hardys fought the Dudleys, you know, Team 3D later in a decade later in TNA, but they, they never they've never fought free on free on free ever again. I'm talking about as a tag team ever again. They fought in singles competition in the next couple of years, you know, with your Edge and Jeff Hardy, Edge and Jeff Hardy, you know, and um, let's see, did Matt Hardy? I think they had a match. This is in 2010. Matt Hardy and Christian. They might be wrong about that. So anyway, so move on to the next match. Um, yeah, the next match, we got a gimmick battle royal, trying to keep it short and simple. This is not a terrible match, I'm sorry. Wasn't bad, wasn't great, it was just like, it's April Fool's Day, you gotta have a laugh. So, you got, the commentators for this battle royal is Bobby the Brain Heenan and Mean Gene Oakland. Because this is their first WWF appearance since, like, the early 90s because they jumped shit from WCW. You had like Doink the Clown in this Battle Royal, Sergeant Slaughter, The Iron Sheet, Nikolai Volkov, Duke the Drozzy, The Goon, Jim Cornette wearing the suit. Uh, you got um, Hey Billy Jim. You got um, let's see Michael P.S. Hayes. I think he's from Texas. Uh, I might be wrong. Um, let's see, no, he's from Georgia. I think. Um, let's see, the Garbage Gooker. <laughs> Give me a fucking break. You got um, was it Earthquake and Tugboat. You got kind of like a reunite, uh, re yeah, the reunite of the national disasters. You know that was in the, uh, the tag team in like in the early nineties. They kind of feud with a uh, you know earthquake feud with Hulk Hogan. Anyway, I think that's it. Um, I'm trying to yeah keep it short and simple. It was just a, sh a, a piss break. It was short and, sw and Swedes. In the end, Iron Sheet got the um the victory. Yeah, and afterwards, Sergeant Slaughter kind of locked uh, the Sheik with the Cobra Clutch. You know, get some heat for America. It's really funny that a decade ago, um, you know, you know, Slaughter was the world champion, and in, in the decade later, he was in this battle royal. So, yeah, it didn't hurt anyone. It's just like um, giving these old timers one last hurrah. It's really sad that right now, half of these wrestlers in, you know, in this battle royal 
n are no longer with us. So, so moving on to the next match. The next match, uh, we got Triple H versus The Undertaker. Um, you know, Triple H brag about he beat everyone in this company. In, in uh, Undertaker confronts him and says, "You never beat me." Uh, uh, Triple H smashed the Undertaker's motorcycle, and also he put a restraining order on the Undertaker who was going after Stephanie. The funny part, like you had Kane trying to like throw Stephanie off a balcony. He didn't really do it. You imagine if they did that? I know it's a stunt double, I understand, but it's just what it is. You know, they never went that direction, so. So yeah, the match between Triple H and Undertaker. Um, out of the three WrestleMania matches between Taker and Triple H, um, the, the match at 17, the match at 27 and 28. Um, 28 was the worst. It was a, a bad, it was it was still a good match, but it was a little bit boring. Doesn't doesn't need to be in Hell in a Cell. You know, end of an era. That was a lot of BS. One or two is between the match at 17 and the No Holds Bar match at WrestleMania 27. It's one or the other. So and also the Bring up the streak for the first time. That's good. This is Undertaker's first WrestleMania match since WrestleMania 15 against the Big Boss Man inside Hell in a Cell. He didn't compete at WrestleMania 16 because he suffered a groin injury in in the autumn of 1999. So he took time off, came back at Judgment Day of 2000 as the American Badass. Um, fucking good match. It was a good match. What it is, back and forth. Um, and also, yeah, they they kind of bullies the referee. You had Triple H push the referee. That was uh, Mike Kyoda. It was better off having like it's better off having like Earl Hebner because Triple H's mini feuds was the referee Earl Hebner. They get you know, they get in their faces. They pushing each other. You know, um, Undertaker kind of like, hit Kyoda with an elbow drop because he because Triple H uh, count of two for the near fall. They fought, there was a referee bump, they fight fighting the crowd, um, they fight on a scaffold, he had, like, Taker chucks Land Triple H off the scaffold, and then Taker did, like, he jumped off the scaffold after he chucks Land Triple H, um, and also, you had Undertaker trying to hit Triple H with the last ride, Triple H managed to grab the sledgehammer, and smack the Undertaker in the head with the sledgehammer. There's r rumors that was, there was reports that that was a fake, uh, sledgehammer, but instead, um, the phone came off and the word kind of hit Undertaker in the head, in his skull. And Undertaker bled, bled buckets. He didn't bled buckets, but he bled. In the end, I think he hit, I think, and also Triple H, uh, no, did Triple H, no, Undertaker hit the Tombstone Power Driver. But instead, um, that was, because the referee was down and he hit, you know, did the, um, the tent to hit the last ride. Um, yeah, Triple H did the, the sledge, sledge, uh, sledge, sorry, sledge, uh, sledge, uh, sledge hammer attempt. Sorry. Sledge hammer. Oh uh, god damn it son. Sled a uh, sled uh chair sled hammer shot sorry fucking hell sled chair <laughs> sled ch uh, hammer shot when he when Undertaker attempts to hit him with last ride. Sorry I'm trying to rip it's man it's too fast like sled chair sled chair Blah. anyway in the end he hit managed to hit the last ride onto Triple H to win this match and he went nine and oh they won't fight again. They fight again months late, a month later. You know, two man power trip, and then they fought again in 2002. And then they fought at the two WrestleMania matches at 27 and 28, and they fought again recently in the recent year was in 2018 at um, Super Showdown in Melbourne and Crown Jewels in Saudi Arabia. You know, Brothers of Destruction versus DX. Um, anyway, so uh, moving on to the main event. Uh, main event. Uh, we got. The Rock defending the World Wrestling Federation Top Championship against Stone Cold Steve Austin. Uh, Austin won the Rumble match in two, in January. Rock won the WWF title from Kurt Angle at No Way Out in February. And they try to push this. The focus on on Deborah because Rock put Deborah in harm's way. He had uh, Angle lock Deborah in the ankle lock. And Austin pissed up Rock. And also they ditched the whole situation. They ditched the um the storyline. Focus on Deborah because the more focus on the two biggest stars at the time that is the rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin so So yeah, um Yeah, the I'm gonna keep it short and simple Um, they beat the living piss out of each other. This is match of the night This has got to be the top five best WrestleMania main events of all time They beat yeah, they beat the living piss. Um rock was bleeding Austin was bleeding um, they kick out both of their finishes, you know, you had Finn's got involved, uh, I think, um, you basically had, <laughs> you had the, the Rock hit, uh, Austin with the Stone Cold Stunner, 
the rock hit uh, Austin hits uh, rock with the people's uh, not the people's elbow the the rock bottom after Vince you know pulled uh, the rock out of the out of the pin for attempt and then you know rock, rock chased Vince and then Austin hit the uh, the rock bottom and also the lock in submission holds like rock lock. Austin with the sharpshooter. I don't know it's a throwaway uh, reference of WrestleMania 13, that match between Austin and Bret Hart, and also Austin did it again. You know, it's a reference to that match of WrestleMania 13, and also Austin locked in the Million Dollar Dreams. It's kind of a reference to the Ringmaster, his old gimmick before he becomes Stone Cold. Rock counting into a roll up. Austin was getting frustrated. You know, I think he hit, hit Rock in the face with the chair shots. He kicked out. Stone Cold Stunner kicked out. Austin was very frustrated. You could tell like Austin is turning heel. Um, Austin every time he kicked out, Austin frustrated. Vince handed Austin the chair and hit Rock multiple times with the chair, pins him, and Austin become the new World Wrestling Federation champion. And this is Rock's final. This is his final match as a full-time wrestler because uh, I think. They did. They had the match on Raw. I think it was on Raw. This is a still cage match. He had Triple H helping Austin win. This was a rematch for the t title in the still cage match, and then that set up the two-man power trip. Rock left the company. He, yeah, he pursued a career in acting. He, he, yeah, he was filming Scorpion King. He came back later on in the year, part of the Evasion Angle. And I don't believe that this was the end of the. This this is not the end of the Attitude Era, man. Yeah, I heard really like this. People stop stop watching wrestling after this because people want to see Austin warring with Vince McMahon, not allied himself with Vince. Uh, yeah, afterwards they, you know, Austin, you know, drunk beers with Vince, and I give Austin some credit because he said in his book and also his documentaries, he said, "I'm love, I'm love, and now I'm, I'm be hated. It's my idea to be hated." You know, I think I give Austin crop cr cr crops and you credits. It's due because he, he said like his character was getting stale. Unfortunately, that's not the case. You know, the only uh, the only way you change that person's uh, if the reason why you have to turn that person heel to ch to change up his character. Unfortunately, the fans they're not sick of the Austin character. They really um got behind Austin throughout the whole bulk of the Attitude Era and the Monday Night Wars. You know, it's like Jim Ross says. It's like John Wayne running away of the the fight. And also said, also, he sold his soul to save himself. Yeah, like I say, yeah, he said like it's John Wayne running away from a fight. And also he had, um, you know, Austin beat down Jim Ross. Or the Smack, I think it was the Smackdown after WrestleMania. I mean, the Austin stuff, you know, when he's teaming, you know, teaming up with Triple H, the two-man power trip. It's kind of underrated, his heel turn. You know, he became the um, a bloodthirsty heel, you know, being down, you know, uh, Jim Ross, Michael Cole, Taz, you know. You know, him and Triple H both first the heels, being down like the Brothers in Destruction, the Hardys and Leah. I think, and also he turned Babyface after, you know, he turned Babyface the Raw before Invasion, the pay-per-view in June. And, oh, uh, is it June? I think it was, yeah, June. You know, you know, in, yeah, they did the Invasion, yeah, they did the, uh, yeah, Austin turned, um, face, you know, you thought he's gonna be WWF through and through, and then... At yeah, that pay per view, he turned he turned his back on the WWF, be the leader of the alliance, and you know I think that could be the reason why people like putting off that Austin Hill turn when he's joined the alliance. He was picking this chicken shit, you know, heel, and that really putting off Austin's um, character. So, and Austin said, I think it's in one of his book. If he really relive this uh, moment at WrestleMania with him and Vince, I think the one thing he would change is give Vince a Stone Cold Stunner. So. Um, the the sequel between Rock and Austin is way better than Rock and John Cena because in the, they did like back to back WrestleManias 28 and 29. But this, you know, because this this is their first match um, since WrestleMania 15. Yeah, they fought back close the following month, but you know they fought at WrestleMania 15. Rock was kind of like the heel. Austin was the the baby face, and at 17 they were kind of like um, Austin was leaning heel. The fans uh, booing the Rock. A little bit because funny that he get booed the following years WrestleMania when he's been with Hogan. Yeah, and also and also at WrestleMania 19, the final match of their feud. Uh, yeah, Rock was heel. You know, he's Hollywood and Austin was the baby face. You know. Yeah, um, I think they did business. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, Austin. You know, I I don't say it was a bad heel. I think it's 
uh, heard it's one of the worst heel turns, but in reality, it's kind of like a big, uh, really a mixed bag because in reality, because um, yeah, people were still cheering Austin as a heel, and also they keep changing Austin's theme music. You know, I don't want to sing in the theme music. You know, it's just they can't they're changing it. Austin's theme music in 2001 was so generic. It went back. I'm uh, glad it went back to the the the, the, the shattered glass. Uh, theme that was good. That was iconic. One of his iconic themes. Instead of the, those themes in two thousand one, it was a bit too generic. So, so yeah. Um, thing that's it. So my final rating for this WrestleMania, my final rating for WrestleMania seventeen or WrestleMania X seven is a ten out of ten. It's between this show and WrestleMania nineteen. It's one of the candidates of one of being the greatest WrestleManias of all time. Barely any bad, um, the, the, the only matches in the okay has to be the six-man tag team match, APA and Taz versus the Right to Censor group, um, Taz versus Eddie Guerrero, Ivory versus China, and, um, the Gimmick Battle Royal. Nothing terrible. You know, you could put the Austin's Hilton as, you know, ter put in the terrible, but, yeah, there was, like, the reason why fans stopped watching wrestling, you know. I'm not saying this pay-per-view is end yet. That's a lot of bollocks about this this pay-per-view and um, the end of the era. It wasn't the end of the two era. I think the end of the two era has to be in 2002 when the brand split and the names changed. You know, I think the final pay-per-view of the two era for me has to be Backlash 2002. I covered that show uh, on this channel last year. So, so yeah, um, in the good, there's the good. Like um, Jericho versus Regal for the IC title, that was good. The Triple Threat match for the Hardcore title, that was fun to watch. Angle Benoit, that was fun to watch. Same as Finn's and Shane. TLC2, uh, Triple H Undertaker. Match of the night has to be Rock vs. Austin 2. It was magical. And yeah, this, I think it's the one and only time. Actually, yeah, they had the celebrity, Molehead. They played Triple H's theme music. Besides that, they don't really need celebrities because the big celebrities in the company at the time was Rock and Austin. So. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed my review of WrestleMania 17. Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. Smash the like button. Subscribe to the Central Man Network on YouTube. Next time, we're keeping this WrestleMania train going. Let's travel a decade later. So let's review... I'm going to review WrestleMania 27. Oh, fucking boy. You had like... I don't know. You had the return of The Rock as the host. Yeah, that's a lot of crap. You know, you, you, know, you had... Um, Miz vs. John Cena, you had Triple H vs. The Undertaker, No Holds Barred uh, match, uh, you got Randy on CM Punk. Um, I can't wait to wa re can't wait to review this, so that's be next time. So this is Essential Man Official sign out. Check you later. That's my review of WrestleMania 17. This is a two thumbs up show.